right, here's my filthy Corvette C7, which I've had on hire for about a week in Miami. I just thought I'd give you a bit of a walk around talk uh, about what I like about it and what I don't like about it. The first Corvette I've ever driven. Uh, I've driven a lot of European sports cars, but not any American ones before. I must say I'm pleasantly surprised. There's a few things that I thought uh, that are surprisingly good that um, I didn't think would be the case, so I'll talk through those. The car's filthy. I've driven it quite a lot. I've probably done a thousand miles since I've been here. Uh, I've been all over the place. We went down the Florida Keys. Naples all over Miami to the various uh, Bay Islands around Miami as well. And the car's been really comfortable, uh, quiet when you want it to be, but uh, savage powerful, uh, great handling and sharp when you want it to be as well. So yeah, sort of a quite impressive car. You can tell by the quantity of um, fly uh, kills on the front bumper that we had a good time driving through the Everglades last night. So start you off with uh, sort of a walk around the various sort of hatches and things. So if we go in the boot, operates on the key. Have is an absolutely massive boot. It's huge. I could fit in there comfortably. We're actually going to have yeah our full holiday luggage in there in a bit for a uh, for a week's trip. So no problem at all for luggage space. The only downside is that the roof fits in the boot, so uh, that does reduce boot space when, when you've got the uh, Tarka roof on. But I think that's worth it. The other unique thing about this car is it has a soft close boot. Look. Really nice wheels on this car, aluminium four part calipers even on the rear. Again on the front. Really nice rims. LED headlights. The car's got cameras on the, on the nose, bug spat at the moment, which help with your parking on the uh, uh, up against curbs. So it means you don't have to really curb it. It has a rear reversal camera as well. No door handles, just a button inside the door. Bit of a squeeze to get in, it's a very low car. Ah, there we go. Right. The dash is a bit unusual uh, for European tastes, but I've worn to it pretty quick. Uh, nice graphics and things come up on the various screens as you turn it on. This one uh, has a six speed um, automatic gearbox which is, um, it's okay, it's nowhere near as good as the one uh, in my BMW M140, uh, which, you know, is significantly better. Anyway, so let's start her up, put on the brake. You can see here, it's got a sort of a band of lights that allows you to uh, rev to a certain point while the engine's warming up um, and then it slowly and release, releases more of the rev range as you go by. A uh, few cool features. Heads up display, I don't know how you can see that. If it comes up on the camera or not. You can adjust the height of the heads up display. It's quite smart and you can also change what information you, you have on there. Really good infotainment system. It's got uh, sat nav and everything, but the Apple Play is probably the best that I've used so far. We've got it's not only heated but also air conditioned seats, which is really useful when the roof um, is down. There's your various selection modes on the gearbox. You can see that's your parking modes so that can see the front of the car when it's uh, maneuvering around low speed, and then that's your reversing camera at the back. The seats are really comfortable and really low, which is excellent for um, sort of sports car driving. And one of the things I've been really surprised with on this car has been the excellent fuel economy. Um, so look, there we go. Average over the last 50 miles, 23.3 miles per gallon. 
I was doing 100 miles an hour across the Everglades last night. That's pretty impressive. Um, is there a long-term average on here somewhere? Long-term average, 24.8 miles per gallon. Amazing for a car with a 6.2 litre V8, just under 500 horsepower. Incredible thing, really impressed with it. Right, let's have a look uh, under the bonnet, shall we? Pull a little latch under here. There it is. There we go. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but uh, pretty good one, nice. Cast iron, control manifolds, aluminium block, lots of aluminium castings under there, aluminium tapes. The access for alternator replacement, probably the best I've seen. The engine also really far back. If you look where the centre line of the wheels is, the engine is behind that line. So this really is a front mid-engined car, which probably helps to explain the brilliant handling that it has. Let's try this roof then. Let's take this little thing for a drive, shall we? So I'm just going to put it in the sportiest mode so we can get a bit more exhaust noise. There we go, track. Front of the controller in the middle here, it's pretty good. Right, okay, so when you're just poodling around, the automatic gearbox is excellent. Uh, really easy, the steering's light, the car's not too noisy, it doesn't make a big fuss, it's just like a really easy town car in comparison to the European sports cars I've driven which seem to be just like harsh all the time. This is a big improvement versus that. So yeah, just drilling around, just letting the engine warm up still. Unfortunately, we're in Miami South Beach. So there's not really an opportunity to completely floor it, but I've got some other video clips um, sort of me driving around the state, which I'll add uh, to this. The engine clearly not made of as lightweight materials and that really impacts um, sort of how the uh, how the engine reacts when you let off the throttle and it uh, drops speed and all that kind of thing it's just not got anywhere near the same uh, sort of uh, responsiveness to the sort of European engines that I'm more used to. Yeah, the engine's got nowhere near the level of response uh, to the European engines that I'm used to, but it counters that with huge amounts of torque. And from what I understand, reliability as well, you've got to factor this is a higher car. I can't picture someone like Avis hiring out a Maserati um, or a Ferrari or something like that in England, or a TVR um, or even a Jag XKR, because I think they'd be a bit too brittle comparison um, I think you know the nature of a higher car and how it gets abused just can't see it working um, with, with uh, this type of supercar that this is I mean this car does 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds um, and that is you know 10 years ago something you'd only get from an absolute top-end Ferrari or McLaren um, or Lamborghini but you know you can get this in a car that is relatively inexpensive 
uh, quite reliable from what I understand and, and fairly cheap to run. I mean, again, yeah, fuel economy blows me away. 6.2 litre V8 and averaging 24.8 miles per gallon. I mean, that's just unheard of. Absolutely incredible. I, I thought when I come to America, big engine cars, appalling fuel consumption, but the gas is cheap, so it doesn't matter. Well, this cost me about $45 to fill up, which is the equivalent to, what, £35-ish, something like that. And I've been getting 400 miles to a tank out of it. It's just incredible, absolutely incredible. Let's just uh, flick around here. One of the sort of reasons this car gets so good on fuel uh, is it's a V8 most of the time, apart from when you're driving carefully, it will drop down to being a V4. And you can see from the little indicator on the dash at the moment, it's an orange V8. But if I drop off, you'll see that it drops to a green V4. There you go. When it's not needed, it's back on V8 again because I'm rolling up the hill. But when you're cruising along um, the interstates or anything like that at uh, a good speed, it stays on V4 for ages. You put it on cruise control. Yeah. Another unique thing of uh, America is you can turn right on a red light. Brilliant. We should be able to do that in England, but obviously left. They love their horns here. Really do. They love to uh, beat the horn. But yeah, beautiful V8. Excellent grunt. Never get bored of that. And with the Targa roof, you just hear it so much better. It's all sort of, sort of part of the experience. So what do I think? Well, the suspension and the ride is brilliant on the car. The, it, it's really comfy around town. The roads are pretty poor in Miami, but it, it, it got, handles that absolutely excellently. Better than my normal everyday car back in England. But also handles fantastically as well. They've got this excellent balance between ride and handling. Really, really good. The, the car doesn't really seem to roll much at all. I think it helps by the really low seating position. You get excellent um, feedback from the car. You don't really ever feel worried when driving it. This, you know, this is a car with nearly 500 horsepower that you can jump into and drive fast straight away. I think that's partially helped by the auto gearbox because uh, that sort of uh, takes a lot of difficulty away with um, sort of the manual supercars. Would I buy one? Yeah, in a heartbeat. I'm actually thinking about selling my car, coming over to the States, buying one of these and importing it back to the UK. I think it's a lot cheaper than buying one in England. They're about £40,000 to buy a second-hand one in the UK, which still is cracking value if you think about it. That would be for sort of a 2015, 2016 supercar. If you compared that to um, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini with the equivalent performance, then yeah. And, and the other thing you get with this that you don't necessarily get with the other cars is all the technology, the heads-up display, the, the rear-view mirror that goes um, sort of completely dark whenever you need to. You've got um, air-conditioned seats, heated seats, um, every type of possible system on here for um, you're connecting your phone to. It's even got a, a tool for uh, performance data recorder it's called where you can set a start and finish line you can video uh, races um, it's got you can drop the screen down to hide something behind it I mean how cool is that um, and then all the different modes on your screen uh, here aside from like cruise control and all the other sort of normal steering wheel controls for your phone and for the for the um, uh, music system and that kind of thing really really impressed with it all the latest technology you'd expect the handling the performance fuel economy the comfort brilliant car it's it's hard to find a fault with it i guess in england it's probably going to be a bit wide and a bit big for english roads but i'd like to find out and see how bad that actually is the biggest downside to this car that i've found is that i've rented it in miami and there's no decent roads to drive it on they're all either straight uh, country roads that just go on for miles and miles and miles which are good to you know put your toe down and get some serious speed on but I've not really found any serious corners to trial it out on and the rest of the time you're just driving around cities like this so it's hard to say how good it would actually be um, on a, a European winding country road but from what I've experienced I would like to think that it'd be fairly excellent so yeah 
buy one, or at least when you come to the States, rent one. It's worth every single penny.